Hi everyone, I'm Shailen here with Reezy. So today we're going to be talking about how to write a haiku. The haiku is a Japanese form of poetry written in a 575 five syllable pattern. The haiku is beloved and also famous for its minimalist nature. But the simplicity can also be deceiving and is what makes the haiku so difficult to master. If you want to learn how to write a haiku, here are six steps to follow. Step number one, read haikus for inspiration. The beauty of haikus is that since they're so short, you can read so many of them in not even too long of a time. Reading a wide range of haikus will help you familiarize yourself with the form so its feeling and its rules start to become intuitive. And you'll also familiarize yourself with different styles of haikus. Find that some are clearer, whereas others are more abstract. And it might also let you know which style of haiku you gravitate towards more as a writer. You can look for a haiku anthology that features the work of many different authors. Reading works by classic haikuists is also a great place to start. Then you can expand to more modern haikuists to get that different perspective. I'll leave a ton of work by classic and modern haikuists in the description if you're looking for a place to start. There are also plenty of examples online, but you do want to make sure you're looking at trustworthy sources such as the Haiku Foundation to make sure the haikus you're reading are being translated and attributed properly. Tip number two, learn the rules of the form. Though very simple in format, the haiku has a long history of traditions. Like with any form of writing, the rules are made to be broken, but because the form is so compact, the rules really do need to be broken for a reason. It will be quite jarring if they're broken in a way that doesn't improve the poem. Japanese poets traditionally wrote haikus as one line with 17 syllables, but in English haikus are typically written as three lines of five, seven, and five syllables. However, in modern interpretations of the haiku, that syllable and line count isn't always strictly adhered to. It's more about capturing the feeling and the effect of the haiku than following that set of rules exactly. Many contemporary haikuists play with the line structure, writing haikus as one, two, or four lines. So you can experiment to find the best layout for your poem, as long as it's still recognizable as a haiku. Here are some examples with varied structure. After killing a spider, how lonely I feel in the cold of night. Masoaka Shiki, not dark yet, firefly. John S. O'Connor. Haikus have very few rules regarding punctuation, so the most important thing is that you're creating the effect that you want. You don't have to really worry about following the rules. A commonly used format in modern haikus is to use an M dash in the middle of the poem to single a shift between a before and after, breaking the poem into two halves and putting them in contrast with each other. For example, I didn't know the names of the flowers. Now my garden is gone. Allen Ginsberg. This splits the poem into two temporal halves, creating a feeling of change and emotional shift as we traverse the punctuation mark in the middle. Haikus are commonly written about nature and contain seasonal references, but they don't have to be, so you can write about any theme you want. However, if you're just getting started and you're worried about your poem being recognizable as a haiku, it will probably be more recognizable as the form if you do rely on these classic themes, but you don't have to. Step number three, focus on the senses. Writing a haiku requires a sensitivity to subtle images within the external world and our emotional reactions to those images. A great skill in writing haikus is an ability to observe the external world and see it with new eyes, exposing its clarity. Author Edward Levinson says that the heart of the haiku is an aha moment that provides clarity about the nature of things, as if some great truth has become apparent through the image provided. This moment could be an insight, or it could just create a distinct feeling. So let's look at a couple examples of this. First autumn morning, the mirror I stare into shows my father's face. Murakami Kijo. This poem reflects on aging in contrast with changing seasons. As the outside world withers into autumn, the speaker looks into the mirror and sees his father's face. Second husband painting the fence, the same green. Carol Montgomery. In this poem, a very simple image of a fence being painted allows the speaker to reflect on the contrast between her two marriages and how they may be very similar to each other, in fact, perhaps too similar. These insights are clear and plain, but also a little unspoken. They're just presented through the images. You can almost think of it as the ultimate form of show, don't tell. So haikus are often born from awareness to these subtleties. Try just sitting somewhere where you feel calm, but there's lots to observe and just watch until you see an image that strikes you. That could become the root of your haiku. Step number four, 
capture a moment and key image. As seen in those examples, imagery is key to a haiku. The image or images presented allows the reader to have a similar sensory and therefore emotional experience as the speaker, bringing the reader into this distilled moment. You present a clear, precise image and it makes the reader feel as if they are there. Start just keeping note of images that strike you in your day-to-day -day life and see if any of them can blossom into a haiku. Once you're in the mindset and actually looking out for these images, the more they'll start to stand out to you. You won't necessarily find a deep or life-changing meaning in every image you encounter, but sometimes an image will strike you as having an importance or relevancy to it. Ask yourself how this image made you see something in a new light, and that can be the foundation of a haiku. Tip 5. Create context and connect your images. To frame an image as a haiku, try playing with two things. The relationship between images and the context in which those images appear. Jim Cation suggests in his, suggests in his book How to Write a Haiku to provide the context as either a seasonal marker or another keyword. So you could mention frost on leaves to signal that the haiku takes place during winter. Or for a non-seasonal haiku, start with a marker such as funeral or evening. The contrast between images is often the foundation of a haiku. So rather than just presenting a single image, the meaning emerges from the contrast between two images, such as in this example. Stillness, sinking into the rocks, a cicada's voice, Matsuo Basho. This haiku presents a tension point between stillness and loudness, or tranquility and chaos, which can suggest how life emerges from nothing and then returns to it. So when you have your images, tinker with them, see how they relate to each other, until you find a link between these images that somehow feels illuminating or magnetic. And finally, tip number six, edit your poem. Just like with any piece of work, the real heart of the haiku will likely emerge in editing. Because a haiku is so short, often you will be making the tiniest of adjustments, but sometimes those adjustments have a huge impact. When you have your images set, you can start to refine your haiku's layout. Decide which syllable structure you want to use, maybe trying out different variations, and decide what punctuation, if any, you want to use. Punctuation can be used to enhance the association between images to create a certain type of movement between images, but it also isn't necessary, and some haikus don't have any punctuation. If you really want to see how much punctuation can affect a poem, find a famous haiku, remove the punctuation, and see how it completely changes how you read it. Read the poem out loud to get a sense of its rhythm, and remember that with so few words, each one should be chosen with the utmost precision. Try different synonyms to see how that shifts both the sound and the meaning of the haiku. Like with any piece of writing, it can be very beneficial to let it rest for a time and then come back to it with fresh eyes. Haikus may be very simple on the surface, and that's both their draw and their challenge. Because it's such a compact, simple type of poem, learning a haiku can also help, your, can help you develop your skills as a poet as a whole by really teaching you how to refine your word choice and create extremely precise images in very little space. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to learn more about how to write a haiku, I will leave a post linked in the description that has even more examples, and you can also review all the information in this video. So thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time, bye!